Welcome to Sports Memos Betting Podcast for May 22nd. It's Wednesday and we got Nick Borman in. We're talking a, a little bit of golf, but mainly the MLS Every Game on the Board podcast. We're talking soccer, Major League Soccer. Nick, welcome into the podcast. How are you? Drew, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, happy to be here with you again this week and uh, looking forward to going through the uh, MLS slate. It's a busy week this week. Uh, tons of games on the board, so looking forward to it. For sure, man. And let's just spend one minute on uh, what the PGA Championship. You had Brooks Kapka and uh, he won. You had him straight up for your free play, right? Yeah, yeah, we took him. Uh, recommended him last week during our pod. Um, we gave out a golf pick instead of the, instead of soccer because um, it was light last week. But yeah, I did Brooks Kepka over Dustin Johnson, and of course, it was nice to have him win outright. So definitely a, a, a winner there. Of course, Dustin Johnson, who he was playing, who I picked him against, finished second. So it wasn't like it was a a blowout win, but uh, it was definitely a, a nice win to have. Yeah, that that was a that. The, it, the way he played, I mean, just got out. And, and one thing, a stat that I noticed that was very uh, appealing towards him was, what, 13 straight major rounds under par? Is that the stat? Yeah, he's uh, he plays – he's kind of like Tiger was back in his heyday. He, It's like he only – I don't want to say he only shows up, but he really shows up differently to these majors and puts so much more – effort and energy and just plays a different game when he's playing during these huge events and uh yeah he's he's been the guy to be right now he's got um back-to-back pgas and he's going for back-to-back u.s open so he's uh he's definitely one of the best guys out there especially in the majors right now he's awesome to watch in and just as a casual fan like i've heard his name but i i really didn't know anything about him until real recently i'm sure there's other people out there like that although the the more hardcore golf fans would know who he is but a, a little bit of his background what he went to florida state and and played golf there and then got right on the tour or do you know anything about his yeah, background? He ha- yeah he has been playing for a little bit longer um i think back to about 2012 or so um but really he's only had much success on the tour in the last four years uh, and most of his, his success is in the majors. I mean, he's only, I think he's only won uh, two events outside of majors right now. So, it's again, it's weird to see, but the guy just shows up and plays differently. And he's kind of going into um, Tiger's fold where he's not playing you know, week to week like a lot of the guys uh, are. And, and he doesn't have to. I mean, um, when you're winning the biggest tournaments, you're going to put the most focus into those. They obviously have the biggest paychecks, but they have the most glory for, you know, for history. Um, as far as being one of the best golfers of all time. So, you know, you'll skip events leading up to the majors. You'll skip events after those, whereas other guys that are just trying to make it week to week to week uh, have to play every single week. And, of course, that drains you throughout the entire year. So it's uh, definitely a nice advantage for him. Um, And, yeah, any any casual golf fans will know the name. Hardcore fans know him as just a – a big time player uh, in big time events, and really, he's he's still new to everybody. He's really only been a name to watch the last three, maybe four years. So um, I'm sure we'll see him for several more years going going forward. And, and what do we got this upcoming weekend in golf? Uh, this weekend is the uh, Charles Schwab Challenge. It's uh, anytime after the, one of the majors. It's usually kind of a smaller event. A lot of the big names won't be playing there. Uh, they're playing in Texas, so um, I'll be looking uh, working on the the, the plays for that that tournament this week but uh definitely a a smaller event in terms of the the yearly schedule and are you are you looking to bet on kepka his next time in as far as i I guess what he won't be playing in a tournament for a little while now yeah it it, see it depends so you never really know the the odds makers you know there's 140 guys on any given pga event um and you don't have the options to just pick anybody over anybody so it usually in a regular event there's only uh, 25, 24, 25 head-to-head plays that are even uh, available as, as matchups. So the odds makers go through the list, try to find guys that are you know, officially ranked on the World Golf Ranking, somewhat close, so you know it's like an even matchup, and they price them, you know, who's going to win head-to-head over the, over the tournament. So you can't just go in going, oh, I'm going to pick Brooks. He may be – you may have him to, to – Head to go head to head against one guy, maybe one other guy, and then you just don't like those particular matchups, so you can't really play them as far as head to head goes. Um, so it's kind of tough as far as the events go. You kind of have to, I don't know, the um, whatever the odds makers decide to put out there is really all you have the options for. So we'll see what what um, who he's going against when he does play again next. He'll probably be here two weeks at the memorial, is where I expect him to play. And, and Nick, you bring up the fact that he doesn't have to play all that much because he wins, and I'm sure uh, you know publicity wise, it's great for him as well. But what what is the paycheck for for winning these majors? Uh, two, right around two million. Um, 
I think it was maybe there he was like one nine eight or one nine seven for the PGA. Uh, Tiger was just over two for the Masters. So um, the regular events are a little over a million. So it's not quite double, but it's close to that. Um, but there's not many guys that are winning these majors right now. It's just the same guys seem to be. There's about twelve to fifteen guys right now that are that are winning the majors over the last several years, and that's about it. And, and what if like what are the guys that don't make the cut? Do they get paid at all? Nope. If you don't make the cut, you get no no money. So if you make the cut, you're in the money. Uh, and even then, you're making 50, 60 grand um, on an event. So a lot of these weekly grinders on the PGA Tour, we like to call them, are, are guys that just shoot to make cuts as much. You're not going to hear their names a lot. They may you know pop up in a top 10 here or there. Uh, but they're guys that are just playing week to week to week, trying to make as many cuts as, as they can. And by the end of the season, you know they'll still end up earning – three four hundred thousand dollars um and that's kind of where you have to be to to gain your tour card for the following year because only the top 125 guys um get their tour card for the following year based on your your earnings for the year so that's kind of how a lot of the lesser name guys go week to week in the on the pga schedule all right man well thanks for explaining that and guys look out on sportsmemo.com on nick's handicapper page you'll have his golf packages up it's got soccer ready to go in terms of free play you can check that out right now on sportsmemo.com but let's break down this mls card nick we're starting uh, actually tonight an early week game we got vancouver at the new york red bulls minus one goal total of 2.75 in tonight's matchup yeah one game tonight um tough situation here for vancouver they played at kansas city on saturday and now have a quick turnaround to travel to new york um we're looking at the record they only have three wins so far this year to go along with four draws and six losses um, however, all of their games have been close. They've only lost one game by more than one goal. So um, they're they're pretty competitive, and they play the low-scoring games generally. So they never really are blown out or, or knocked out of uh, any games as far as competition goes. Um, last week, I backed them as a plus 1.25 underdog, um, which cashed against uh, Kansas City. So again, just a team that stays in it most of the time. Um, so as far as this line goes, I think you know I think the Ozmakers have it right on the money here at minus one. I mean, if New York wins, it's probably not going to be by more than one goal. Um, and I, I like the chances New York wins the game just because Vancouver, like I said, is is, is a big travel schedule here to go across the country on short short rest. Um, so personally, I'm going to pass in this one. If if you need some action in this one, I'd look to the under here. Uh, Vancouver, like I said, because of their low scoring and close competitive games, they play to a lot of unders. They're actually uh, have hit the under in nine of the last 10 matches. So if you need something on this one, look to the under. But personally, I'm going to keep my money in my pocket here. We've got a couple games on Friday slate. L.A. Galaxy at Orlando. Orlando minus a half a goal at home. A total of three here, Nick. Yeah, so we're seeing this number um, to Orlando mostly because the mighty Zlatan is uh is is out for this game it's his second game of his two game suspension um he was in a they, they called it um uh, what was the word they used it, it, he was in a little bit of a incident i guess in one of the games two two uh days or two games ago um and got a two game suspension for it even though he kind of shoved somebody the guy that he shoved which is notorious in soccer flopped like you know he broke three <laughs> three ribs or something um so it was definitely overblown but anyway he's out for this game and that's why we're seeing orlando uh favored here um you know without zlatan in the lineup la is just not quite the same team um you know they, they don't have the guy up front that can really truly take all the focus for the defense when he's in there everybody's paying attention to him what's he doing um where's he at uh and if he's not the one scoring he's drawing enough attention away from everybody else to uh to open up other players so they are a different team without him um they did lose at home this past weekend to colorado which colorado was off to the mls worst record worst start ever so they finally got their first win and of course it was at the at the galaxy uh, without Satan. but listen the Galaxy were struggling before before Zlatan went out, and that was their fourth straight loss. So, when the, you know earlier this year when they were doing well, their defense looked like it had made a turn for the better this season. But they've now conceded nine goals in their past four games, um, so they're definitely not playing well, especially defensively right now. Colorado, or excuse me, uh, Orlando, they won last week in blowout fashion. They won five one at home against Cincy, um, which is their third win in their last four home games. Uh, but it was only their first win in their last five games overall. This is another tough one. Um, I think I would be probably forcing something to give my recommendation. Um, I think both the line total are probably right on the money here. So it's another another pass for me on this one, Drew. We got Atlanta, the Atlanta United minus 
2.25 goals on the road at Real Salt Lake. Total of 2.75, Nick. And uh, I know from doing these pods with you, man, it's it's unique. It's it's rare to have a team favored on the road in the MLS, but we got it here. Also at altitude, you know, Atlanta, not too much altitude. I know uh, Salt Lake City at altitude. How much does that factor in? Definitely has is, is a factor, um, and you were right in the money. I mean, this is the only road favored of the card this entire weekend. Um, we don't see them a lot in the MLS, uh, and, and right now that's based on Atlanta. They, they, they've been playing really, really well. They've been playing great defensively all year, but they've uh, finally been scoring a little bit more the last few games. Um, they did lose this past weekend um, 0-1 to at New York Red Bulls, but they uh, before that they were on a five-game uh, winning streak, keeping clean sheets. Um, so basically holding their opponents scoreless in all five games, which was an MLS record. Um, you know, I, the, the way they're playing, the way their defense is playing, and the fact that, you know, even when they are uh, offensively clicking, they're only scoring two goals max. I think the under is a way to look at this one. Um, I don't like laying any anything on the road in the MLS. It's just, like we talk about all the time, it's just not something that a lot of road teams come in and win very often. And if they do, um, it's, it's, you know, not something I'm – willing to bet on at least a favorite as far as a favorite goes so i like the under here um atlanta they've like i said they've been fantastic defensively all year um they've scored just nine or excuse me they've conceded just nine goals through 12 games and have scored only 13 uh only two of their matches so far have finished over this total and uh, both of those finished at three goals which would only be a half half wager loss here at this number um, Salt Lake, they do have a 9-3 and three over record this year, but six of those games ended right on three goals. So similar thing, they're only a half loss. Um, my numbers have this total at about two and a quarter. So I think there's decent value here. If, if it does go over, I'd be very surprised to see more than three goals, but I think there's a great chance this one's going to stay under here, Drew. All right, Nick. We got Montreal at Los Angeles FC minus one and a half goals here, Los Angeles is. So I believe they have to win by, what, two goals, Nick? And it's a total of three. Yes, uh, right on the money. Um, LAFC is the is you know arguably, but uh, in the power rankings, the number one team in the MLS right now. Um, I keep trying to find reasons to fade them. I'll be honest. Um, you know, at this point of the season, it's you know it, you're looking at the numbers starting to get inflated um, because they keep winning, they keep covering, and um, at some point that's going to catch up with them. But like I said, I, they just keep finding ways. Uh, to cover the number they did um, earn just a draw at Dallas as half goal favorites in their last game so they didn't cover that one but at home they do continue to cover these big numbers minus one and a quarter minus one and a half um, Montreal is they're, they're a tough team to read um, they lose when you expect them to win they win or draw when you expect them to lose um, the good news for them is they have their star Ignacio Piatti. Uh he's back as he returned from injury he came on as a sub in their last match against New England um, last weekend. But he's probably going to need a game or two to kind of get up to game speed, uh, and he may not be a huge impact. Um, and I'm air-quoting that as I mean no pun intended there uh, for the Montreal impact, but he's probably not going to be a huge impact uh, this particular game. Um, LAFC at home, they're, they're, they're a force. Um, they're getting six and a half shots on goal per game while le- allowing less than two shots on goal per game. So, you know, assuming we see similar numbers here, uh, winning by two goals should not be a problem for them. So this one I'm going to recommend LAFC. I think they'll uh, I think they'll cover this number here at home. And Nick, when we see LAFC minus a goal and a half, obviously very heavy favorite there having to win by two goals or more. And then just the game before, we saw Atlanta minus .25 goals on the road. Obviously MLS um, I, I think as far as home field advantage, just kind of from looking from the periphery, it might value home field advantage more than any other sport out there, even more than, you know, college football, Saturday night, tough road trip, you know, all that noise and everything. In your opinion, from what you know in the sports betting world, is home field, home home court advantage, home ice advantage, whatever you want to call it, in soccer the most important, or would it be another sport in your opinion? I would say um... – as far as MLS goes, probably it, it very well might be. I mean, if you just put like a, a, a number to the ratio of, you know, if you have a half a goal to a three quarter goal swing um, from home field to not home field, and you're talking about two or three goals um, per game total, I mean, you're talking a, a significant, you know, 25, 30 percent change of total goals in a game or total points in, in any particular game versus, you know, what NFL, you're talking generally about like a three point 
three point swing for for home favorites there versus forty to maybe fifty points being scored in the game. So obviously, like you know, five you know five percent, ten percent of the uh, total points scored. So it is a percentage based how much it moves the number. Yeah, I would I would agree with that. Um, I don't think you see quite as much of a home swing over in you know England. Um, Italy, some of the big leagues over in Europe, although of course there still is, but the MLS, um, does happen to be one of the biggest home, uh, home favorite soccer leagues that's out there. And, and I think you're right on the money with your point there. And, and why, why is that? Because it, it's not just the sport of soccer, unless there's rule changes from the EPL to MLS that I'm not aware of, but is it just travel spots or are they not chartering the planes? What do you th- are they not staying in hotels over like two nights, just one? Do you know? Can you think of any reasons why it's more important in MLS than in the EPL? I would say co- probably a couple reasons. Um, I mean, traveling, you're you're right in the money. The, the U.S. is you know when you're talking about England, you're talking about everybody in the same time zone. Everybody, you know, they can make a trip from from their their uh, hometown to the other team in, in, in an hour or two. Um, and that includes <laughs> boarding and departing a plane. If they are even taking a plane, sometimes they're just taking a quick bus ride or something else. Um, so there's a much busier travel schedule in the U.S. Um, because of how big the country is versus these other countries. Um, but I also think you know the the up to down level of player is not nearly as deep in this league as as those other leagues. So you know when you get guys that are not quite you know the best in the world out there, they tend to have bigger. I don't want to say variances in their performances when they're, you know, home versus away. So I think it's a combination of both of those. Um, and, you know, maybe over time that should start to change because they are, you know, the MLS is starting to, to, to show a sign of uh, increased player performance. Um, is starting to gain a little bit of popularity as far as strength of leagues out there in the world. So maybe that'll change over time. But right now I think I think both of those factors kind of come into play. Okay, good stuff, and and of course, variant it, it creates opportunities to uh, for, for the better. So it's actually could be a good thing in terms of uh, betting the sport. But let's move on to Saturday's card. We got uh, New York City at Chicago. Chicago minus point two five goals looks like a total of two point seven five goals. Nick has a uh, free play up here that you can read in detail with his free play on sportsmemo.com at his handicapper page. So I definitely recommend you all checking that out. We also have Dallas at Vancouver. Vancouver Vancouver minus 0.25 goals, total of 2.5. Nick, what's your opinion, Dallas, Vancouver, and any quick thoughts on the New York City game? Um, well, real quick, New York City game. Um, I mean, really for me, for them, it's the fact that, uh, you know, they started off the year kind of slow, weren't winning games, but they also weren't losing games. And uh, they lost their two biggest offensive weapons from last year, but it looks like they finally kind of figured out their lineups. Um, they have just one loss uh, on the entire year right now. So, you know, catching them, getting getting any sort of goals here, even though it's only a quarter of a goal, um, seems like a no brainer to me. In Chicago, they uh, they've played well at home, but their home wins are, are against Colorado, New England, and Minnesota, who are were three non playoff teams from last year. So, you know, they just don't have a lot of good competition under their belts um, for their home wins. So, New York City is just makes like a lot of sense to me to make as a play here. I don't I don't see them losing this game. I think there's a good chance they could win it, but I just don't see them losing it here. So, catching the quarter of a goal um, is is definitely what I recommend in this one of my free play of the week. So, I like them here. Um, five and three so far on the MLS free free picks on our pod. So, try to make it six and three on this one. Um, Moving on to Dallas at Vancouver, um, I think Dallas is the better team, uh, but they are winless in their last five matches. Um, however, those last five matches were LAFC twice, uh, the Red Bulls, Houston, and San Jose. So really only San Jose was the bad result there. Um, their other two losses this year were at Philly and at Columbus, two more very good teams. Um, but they've otherwise managed to get results against uh, all their inferior opponents, and that's what I would consider Vancouver to be in this one. Uh, Vancouver has just just three wins this year, uh, although one of them was a strong win against LAFC, which was their only loss so far on the year. Um, but it's hard to lay any goals on a team winning less than 25% of their games as they are right now. So uh, we also previewed their Wednesday night matchup because um, they're playing Wednesday night as well tonight. Um, earlier drew so i think you know another factor here is a quick turnaround uh for vancouver so i think dallas catching the quarter of a goal is the way uh to play this one they they earned points in both games last year uh with one win and one draw and i think they'll at least earn a draw on this one so dallas plus 0.25 in this one all right we got dc united at new england new england minus a quarter goal total of 2.75 in this one 
Yeah, another uh, – going right back to it, another quick turnaround here in New York, uh, also playing tonight. Um, and then they travel to Cincinnati on Saturday, so short rest here for them. Uh, but they are the better team on paper, and they should be able to win this game or at least earn a point with a draw. Um, they've won four of their last five after they were also off to a slow start this year. Uh, Cincinnati, they have scored uh, the least goals in the league this year, just 11 through 13 games. And only Colorado and New England have conceded more goals in their 23. So obviously off to a, a tough start for them. Um, they recently fired their coach, uh, and things looked good for them in their first game last week. And they got off to a, a 1-0 start Orla- at Orlando. Uh, only then to concede five goals and lose one to five. So probably best to wait until after tonight's game uh, with New York, just in case something happens injury wise. Um, and also just to get an idea of their lineups. Usually when you have teams play uh, three part, three days apart like this, you'll see the manager rotate their lineups a little bit. It won't be everybody necessarily, but he may, um, he may have a couple key guys rested at key spots. Um, so we'll wait, wait until tomorrow. Um, to see what how this game plays out tonight, but most likely um, New York is to play in this one unless something major happens with their lineup. Even with a couple guys rested, um, knowing going into Cincinnati, I like the Red Bulls to uh, to come away with a win there. And if you take them on the pick line, which it is right now, the two way line, if they draw, it's just a void on the bet. So not a lot of risk there unless Cincinnati wins the game, which I don't think they will. It's interesting that uh, the MLS kind of betting market puts up the numbers even though they got a game to play tonight. That uh, doesn't always happen in other sports. They would wait until the next day to put up the numbers. But uh, interesting there with MLS betting. We've got Portland at Philadelphia. Philadelphia minus point seven five total of three, Nick. Yeah, real quick to hit on that point, Drew, you're, you're, you're right. Um, all Almost all the European leagues, you'll see lines out for two weeks in advance, too. So like Premier League, when they get back in full swing in August, you'll see uh, you'll see two weeks of lines out before games are even played. So you're right. I mean, if something does happen, they'll, of course, pull something down and make a quick adjustment. But they, they put them out there because they know guys are looking way ahead to try to try to gain whatever advantage they are. And, I, and, you know, again, going back to how much a line could change or how much variance there is between home field and, and, and away – even if somebody's missing, you're probably not going to get a huge number change. It's not going to be like a four, five, six point move in basketball or something like that. It's going to be maybe a quarter of a goal. So they do put them out there two two weeks in advance usually for these these leagues. Um, all right, so DC at New England. Um, DC they were on their way to earning another point in Houston last week before they conceded two goals in less than two minutes. Uh, so they went up. They went from one zero up to down one to two, uh, where the game ultimately ended. Um, while they aren't always the better team in some of the games they played in this year, they are keeping them close and, and are, they're coming away with points more often than not. Uh, New England has been struggling this year with just three wins uh, and just one win in their last six games. They've conceded at least three goals in four of those six games, including six to Philly and five to Chicago. So defensively really struggling. Um, however, they recently made some major changes. They fired both their head coach and their general manager uh, and have appointed Bruce Arena as their sporting director and head coach. Um, if you're familiar with that name, he's the ex-manager of Team USA, and he's a five-time MLS Cup winner with uh, the Galaxy and DC United. So um, in the two games since the change, they've earned four points. They won at home against San Jose, and they drew at Montreal. So um, anytime in soccer you see these manager changes, you see you usually always see a, a boost of energy um, to the teams immediately with you know just the excitement in the clubhouse um, and the excitement around around the players. So Arena he brings a, a, a level of uh, he brings a winning mentality along with him. He's won a lot over his career, so the players are excited there. Um, and I think they can expose DC here, who have honestly been lucky to earn most of their road, road points this season. Like I said, they haven't always been the better team in some of the games that they're still earning draws in. Um, so I think there's good value on New England on the three-way line at around plus 120 or so, but you could play it safe at minus a quarter of a goal and take them there as well. But there's a reason I think we're seeing New England favored here, and I think it's the manager change. So I like them in this one. All right, Nick. And, and what game do you have next? Because I think we were on uh, the wrong page as far as which games we were talking. Do you have Portland, Philadelphia, or Houston, Minnesota? Yeah, uh, Portland, Philadelphia, yep. Okay, and then Houston, Minnesota, Columbus yes. at Colorado to finish off yep. the Saturday card? You got it. Good stuff. Well, let's talk Portland at Philadelphia, minus point seven five total of three, man. Yeah, so this is it. This is Portland's last road game before finally reopening Providence Park. So they've started the season uh, with 12 straight road games um, for the Timbers this year. So this is the last one. Um, so I'm not going to get into too much here. But I think we're going to see Portland a little complacent in this game, and they're probably going to get caught looking ahead to that home opener. Um, as for Philly, you could argue that 
LAFC is the only team playing better than them right now. But even that is honestly debatable. The Union are absolutely rolling right now, and I think they, they're going to win this one rather easily. I think it's a tough spot for Portland. I like Philly to, to handle this one pretty easily, Drew. All right, Nick. And uh, guys, make sure to check out Nick's homepage on sportsmemo.com for his free play, New York City at Chicago, with written analysis up there. He's got his golf packages coming up at, as well as MLS by the end of the day. We get Houston at Minnesota. Minnesota point two five favorites, total at 2.75, Nick. Yeah, Houston star attacker uh, Albert Ellis left the D.C. match last weekend early. Uh, so we're going to have to wait and kind of see what's what's going to happen with him. I haven't heard anything or read anything yet on his uh, injury updates and if he's going to miss any time. Um, but Houston has been terrific to start the year. They have seven wins, two draws, and just two losses. And only LAFC has conceded less goals uh, in the in the Western Conference than their 12 so far. Uh, Minnesota has been solid so far this year as well. They're much improved from last year where they were a non-playoff team um, and are undefeated right now at home so far this year with two wins and three draws. Their home opener came only on April 13th as kind of similar to Portland. They were finishing stadium work, although theirs was a, a brand new stadium. Um, but the point I'm making there is their first match was a 3-3 shootout with New York City uh, with a lot of excitement around that game. But since, all four of their home games have stayed under the total. Um, so assuming Ellis is unavailable for this match for Houston, who's their star player, um, and the trend pointing towards uh, Minnesota home unders, I, I would look at the under here. Um, once once that is announced, whether Ellis is out or not, the line may drop to 2.5. So there's some risk in waiting, but I, I would still say uh, wait and see on this one. But I would look under here um, if Ellis is out of this matchup. All right, Nick, last game on the Saturday card before we hit the Sunday card real quick. Columbus at Colorado. Pick em price here, total of 2.5. Yeah, Rapids, uh, they got their first win of the year last week, and I think uh, I think we got a good chance to see them back-to-back here. Um, that win last week was honestly overdue. Uh, they're not as bad as their record indicates. Now, they're not a great team by any means, but they've been a lot more competitive uh, in a lot of those games than, than their record's going to show. Um, and the line here, I think, indicates that odds makers feel the same way. Uh, and I like them here to, to get their, their back-to-back win. Uh, Columbus, they've lost five straight road games and were held scoreless in four of those games, and they've scored one single goal in all of those. So now with that monkey off Colorado's back, I expect them to play a little more freely, um, and I think they're going to control this game and be the better team and, and create more chances here. So the safe way is to play the, the, the two-way line, the pick and price, um, where the game would just be a, a void or a push on, on a draw. But it's also got good value at around plus 150 on the three-way line for Colorado to win outright. So either way is worth a few bucks, but I like Colorado in this one. Nick, we get the Sunday's card. Two games here, Seattle at Kansas City. Kansas City minus a half a goal, total of three. Yeah, Seattle has to be the play here. Um, you know, unless the odds makers know something, I don't. But, the, the uh, you know, why Kansas City is a half goal favorite um, is honestly beyond me. And last week they were the same way. Kansas City was a minus one and a quarter goal favorite at home. Uh, and I gladly backed Vancouver in that game and, and, and they earned a draw there. So I don't understand why they're they're at a half goal favorite here. They're they're so depleted right now with injuries. Um, and Seattle is one of the best teams in the league. Um, even at full strength, I don't know if Kansas City should be favored by a full half goal. Maybe it maybe a quarter of a goal, but this number's kind of got me scratching my head. Um Seattle, they did what they had to last week. They won at home on Wednesday, uh, and then they went on the road three days later to Philly um, and and didn't lose. So you know, a lot of times in the MLS when you have these quick turnarounds, you know, you're know you playing one game to win and you're playing the other game not to lose. You have to kind of change your tactics based on short turnarounds and resting players and stuff. So they did a good job last week of managing the schedule, um, getting four points out of that that week. Um, and Philly, when they went in there to get that draw, it was a good draw. I mean, Philly's arguably one of the hottest teams in the league right now so uh i don't see any reason why kansas city should be favored here i think seattle is a no-brainer catching the half a goal here um this kansas city is actually winless and they're in nine straight games so again i don't know why they're getting a half or favored by a half a goal here so seattle in this one drew all right nick we got one game left do want to give a quick shout out to all the people that tailed uh teddy's two dollar tuesday winner yesterday on the oakland athletics plus 115 underdogs winning that one and cashing the two dollar tuesday play he's in with a five percent mlb big ticket on today's slate check it out at sportsmemo.com he's also got a free play up on his page nick has his free play up new york city fc at chicago five and three i believe on the year right nick Yes, that is correct. Going for six and three. 
All right, good stuff. And he'll have his uh, golf up by the end of the day, MLS up shortly as well. But let's finish it off here, Nick. San Jose at Toronto. Toronto minus .75 home favorites. Total, high total here, 3.25. Yeah, this is really the only game that has um, already started to move off its opening price. Toronto opened at minus one, and the total was at three. So some early money coming on San Jose and the over. Um, That being said, at plus one, I think San Jose was a good option. Uh, They're playing better at the moment than Toronto. Um, And at at minus a half a goal, Toronto is probably the, the play because San Jose does not travel that well. And has to go across the country for one, which is you know always difficult. So, I think the most likely results here are either a draw or a Toronto win by a single goal. So, at this current number minus point seven five, I don't see value at all. Um, and it's another good reason I always try to get out ahead of these moves in the MLS because when you're talking two or three goals in a game, a quarter of a goal movement in a line can change everything. And I think that's what we're looking at here. I think I don't think we're going to see the line move back to plus one. If it did, I would I would look at San Jose. Um, and if it moved to Toronto only at a, a half goal favorite, I might look at them. But I think it's going to stay right where it's at at this point. Now I think it's settled in and, and at this number. I don't like it. Uh, same thing with the total. Um, I think that that extra quarter of a goal that's moved to the over has taken away a lot of value there. So uh, pass on this last game of the week for me here, Drew. Um, keep your money in your pocket. Plenty of other good action out there this week. All right, Nick. Good stuff as always. Anything else you want to throw out there before we shut this down? Uh, no, well, I'm looking forward to uh, – so the, the European leagues have, have uh, all but ended. The Premier League is done. Um, we have the Champions League final coming up next Saturday. Uh, so we'll talk about that a little bit next week uh, on our pod, which is uh, Liverpool and Tottenham. And then uh, coming up in the summer, the next couple of weeks, we got um, we got a lot of world FIFA action. So we'll have like, uh, the Copa America tournament, which is a South American tournament, You know, Brazil, Argentina, those teams. Um, so you're going to see some fun summer tournaments that are going to going to start to come on the schedule. Uh, we'll start to look at those, you know, each week as we go forward, as we start to see international games pick up. As all the major European leagues will be pretty much done um, until August, so uh, we'll be some different stuff previewing over the next few weeks. But luckily, we have MLS every week going forward, so we'll keep hitting on those each week as they have games. And, and when's the Gold Cup? Uh, it should be in the end in June and July. I don't have the exact dates in my finger, but I know it's coming up towards uh, middle of June to middle of July, somewhere in that neighborhood. And we're the def- def- defending champions, right? Yes, yes. Okay, but it still doesn't get you into the World Cup. We learned. <laughs> exactly. You still got to go through the World Cup qualifiers to get there, and <laughs> hopefully next time around we make it. Yeah. That was a- <laughs> I, I think they should change the rules though. If you win the Gold Cup, you get an automatic bid or something. Yeah, that would be nice. It gives a little bit more um, reason to, to to put all your cards in that basket and go for the win. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, right now they got to go through regular qualifying to get into the World Cup. Yeah, man. Well, uh, good stuff as always, Nick and guys. If you enjoyed the uh, podcast, please uh, give us the like like button on uh, YouTube, and uh, we'll have Nick back on uh, on next Wednesday breaking down uh, MLS and golf as well. So best of luck with your bets. We'll be back tomorrow talking with Robbie Vino breaking down the ACC. Yes, college football already not too too far away. So uh, we'll have Robbie Vino on talking the Atlantic Coast Conference. Best of luck with your bets. We'll talk tomorrow.